Hey guys, and welcome back. In this video, I'm going to share with you how I built this white oak bed frame. I started by playing around with the orientation of these boards to see which way they lined up best. And then I marked with a pencil here where I was going to drill for my biscuits. So the biscuits are used to line up the pieces when gluing them up. And this just prevents the pieces from slipping under the clamping pressure and ultimately means less time sanding. And this part that I'm gluing up here is going to be used for the headboard of the bed frame. So this is white oak material here and here I'm cutting a piece in half for my feet. So as you can see here, I have two pieces stacked on top of each other. And what I did is I put down a bit of tape and CA glue just to stick the two pieces together. And that way when I cut out the shape, it'll be the exact same on both legs. And once I was done on the bandsaw, I spent a bit of time just profiling the piece a little bit more and making the curves a little bit smoother. And so here I am marking out where my headdress is going to go, as well as the bottom part where the bed slats will attach to. And again, here I am using some tape and super glue to stick the pieces together. And this one actually I ran out of super glue, hence why I have the cap off and I'm scraping off the inside of the bottle. So for this one I also used a few screws to hold those two pieces together. So this bandsaw that I'm using is the Laguna 1412 and it has no problem cutting through this white oak. I've actually resawed up to 8 inches I believe it was, um, maple, so this it's a carbide tooth blade and just cuts through like butter. And again, here I am with my belt sander, just smoothing out some of those cuts. Uh, and you can see here, I'm using my holdfasts on my bench. And if I had a table saw, it would have made a clean cut on the back. I 
there was a few imperfections from cutting it with the bandsaw, so I just used my hand plane as well as sander until I got that back part nice and smooth as well. And here are the legs all laid out, and you, as you can see, I have mirrors of both the top and bottom. And so by this time, my headboard had finished gluing, so I took it out of the clamps and spent a little bit of time sanding it nice and smooth. And I started with 60 grit and worked my way all the way up to 220 grit. So here I am using a 16th inch roundover, and this is just to break the edges and make the bed smooth to the touch. This is the Bessem dowel jig which I picked up and very impressed with the quality and the precision. So here I am setting the depth of the dowel jig and making sure that I'm drilling about a sixteenth of an inch, a little bit more than a sixteenth of an inch deeper than I need and that's just to make sure that the glue has a little bit of space to go so my dowels fit snugly. So this jig is pretty cool. You just line it up where you want. You drill the first holes and then you move it over. And it has this little spacer metal piece which just falls into the last hole you drilled. And that ensures that the next holes you drill are lined up with the previous ones you, you drilled. And one thing I made sure was as I was drilling into the end grain, my bit would get a little bit hot, so I'd drill a little bit, let the bit cool off, and then continue. And so these are the footboard pieces, and I'm just drilling in the corresponding holes to line up with that other board that I did. And then it was time for the glue up of the footboard. So I put some glue in each of the holes, hammered in the dowels. And these are three inch hardwood dowels I just picked up on Amazon. So 
So as you can see here, some of the dowels aren't going all the way in just because I put in a little bit too much glue. So I just used one of my pipe clamps to really compress and squeeze those dowels in. And you can see the glue dripping out from inside the dowel joint. And you'll notice here I have a thicker board underneath. And that's because there's so much clamping pressure that if I just had that white oak board, it would buckle and bend and snap. So the the thicker board underneath just acts as a brace. And you'll see here that I'm going to clamp down the white oak board to this board to make sure that uh, it doesn't buckle under the pressure. And so in this, this first glue up, my clamps weren't long enough. So here I'm using two I think these are five foot clamps um, attached together and slowly just tightening each to bring my two legs tight to the um, centerpiece. And while that was gluing, I started cutting down and drilling the dowels for the corresponding piece on the headboard. So here I am using my track saw to make sure there's a nice clean cut on the end of my headboard piece. And you can see here that uh, I could have used a little bit longer material. I'm cutting off <laughs> just a little bit here, um, but we had enough and I made sure the pieces I selected were, were perfect so that you know I could use the full length of the board. And here I am drilling the dowels for the headboard. And here I'm doing every second spacing on the Bessem dowel jig. Uh, and that's because <laughs> uh, the more dowels you have in the glue up, the more pressure you need to squeeze the pieces together. So doing every, every space would be excessive. And so you'll notice that as we get closer to the top of these uh, feet for the headboard, the stock gets a little bit thinner. So I had to adjust my uh, dowel depth. Here you can see why I had to adjust the depth of the drill bit for these top four holes. So these dowels are a, a very tight friction fit as is. So I'm not even sure I needed that much glue in each joint. Um, but once these are, are glued together, the, these joints will be pretty much indestructible. So here's just a picture pre-glue up of the headboard and you can see here I have three longer clamps. Each of these are about nine feet long so plenty of space for my 60 inch or 60, 66 inch wide headboard. So this was a pretty big glue up but I had done one before so I kind of knew what to expect. So I made sure that the dowels on both the feet pieces were already in and then I just lined them up and slowly started to tighten all the clamps. You can see here that as I tighten it, the headboard, the board below kind of bows under the pressure. So I added clamps on top to kind of even out the pressure. Maybe I could have done a better job securing the clamp because this happened.
So here I am adding a 2x4 to the side rail of the bed. And this is just to act as a surface for the bed slats to rest on. And because the white oak I'm using is about 7 8 inch thick, this 2x4 helps to brace the piece and make it just a little bit more rigid. And to make sure that the glue joint didn't fail, I added some fasteners to hold these pieces together. So here's the hardware I'm using. And these are pretty cool because they allow the side rails to detach from the bed frame. So you can always disassemble and move the bed if you need. You don't see all of it, but there was a lot of measuring and planning to make sure that these pieces of hardware were in the right place to make sure that the finished joints were nice and snug. And of course, I had a piece of tape here on the drill bit to make sure I wasn't drilling all the way through my hardwood. So once I had all the pieces of hardware installed, I did a quick dry assembly of the bed to make sure it all fit together. For these I was going to use the same type of hardware I used on the side pieces but uh, I couldn't find one that was the right size for this 2x4 so I just used a floor joist hanger here. So what I didn't show was about four hours of sanding all of these pieces all the way up to 220 grit. Then I applied a Verithane semi-gloss finish and the client wanted a finish that kept the natural color of the wood without making it too dark or, or golden and so this was a perfect finish. So between each of my finished coats, I sanded at 400 grit just to take off any high spots the finish left. And then it was time to deliver and assemble the bed.
So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to leave a like and subscribe down below.